second video of the day. Um, I just could, couldn't get this off my mind, and it's one of these things where it's like you you uh, discover something, and it opens up a whole bunch of things for you. And so I want to talk about triads for one, and I'm going to focus on the major triad, what a triad is, and I want to cover um, what I'm going to show you. It applies to minor triads, uh, diminished triads, augmented triads. It's the same. The same approach applies to all. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna walk through this with the major triad, and um, I think some of these shapes are like essential, especially for a bass player. Um, I mean, they apply to any instrument really, but I think they're especially useful uh, for bass players because our role is. Uh, typically uh, uh, grounded and lay, laying that sort of root third five fundamental harmony uh, in the music so these are uh, essential shapes in my opinion um, and uh, what you can do with them I think I'll, I'll try to show a couple of examples right at the end of, of how you may use these these shapes these triadic shapes as a skeleton structure to uh, uh, you know to, to to flesh out you know uh, base you know melodic ideas over and um, that's that's kind of how I look at them when I'm when I'm playing bass uh, uh, you know I like to improvise a lot on bass so having kind of a skeleton that I can, uh, they're sort of like the lines that I color inside of uh, when I'm playing. And uh, I find it stimulating for me, like artistically, to kind of have like, have some boundaries to, to play off of, obviously. So anyways, before I, I go uh, more into that, the triad, let's talk about what a triad is. So a triad is basically a three, uh, three note chord and triads are formed by uh, a, a triadic chord chords if it's not you know if you don't know already chords are based off of every other note in a scale so to find out what the major triad is I'm gonna use my trusty uh, G major uh, chord and I'm gonna pick if I play that uh, that scale if I take the first note, the third note, and the fifth note, one, three, five, I get a triad. That's the major triad. You've heard it a million times. What I want to do is show you six different ways you can play that major triad, and I think it's worthwhile to learn all these. Uh, because it will open up some ideas on, uh, you know, how you can build, you know, uh, a variety of different, you know, baseline ideas or, or melodic ideas or improvisational lines. So I'm going to go through, uh, I just showed you the first one and let's just say that that's, that's your, uh, that's your basic triad shape. I'd play that with a, for a G major, I'd play it with, uh, you know, my second, my first, and my fifth, I could play it like this. Um, but I'm, I'm playing the same notes, just different fingering. And that's like a standard one, three, five shape. There are two inversions of that, uh, which play the same notes, they just invert it. So they call this the first inversion. So basically, I've just played the three, the five, and I've played the one an octave up. That's called inversion one. So there's your triad. This is your first inversion. Second inversion would be this shape, which is the five, the one, 
the three. So that's three ways to play it. And any bass player should know those shapes, should be able to recognize those shapes immediately as major triad in various forms or inversions. So I'm gonna show you three more. And it's, uh, it's, it's similar um, in that we're gonna kind of invert things, but I learned these initially as uh, like open triads. And the idea is there's, instead of ascending, um, ascending numerically, you're, you're skipping. And, I, and, I'll, and I'll give you the first example. Um, so if I play root, instead of playing uh, one, three, five, I wanna play one, five, three. And what I wanna do is take that three and position it an octave higher. Okay, so I get, and, and I'm sure you've heard that a million times. A lot of classical music. Uh, you know, that's a, not another way of expressing an arpeggio, uh, a triad. Well, if we take that idea of inversions, we can use this same idea where you you uh, you skip an interval in the triad and and replace it with an octave higher. So I'll play the um, another inversion. So I'm going to play the three, the eight, the five, which are all still a triad, uh, and I'm going to put the three here on the B because I'm playing. So basically I'm gonna be playing a B major triad by starting on the three, going to the one, going to the five. That's another way of playing um, an open triad. And that shape, you wanna like learn that shape. And the last one would be a five, three, one. And I'm gonna shift this up uh, to the D up here so we can see what that looks like. And it would be like this, five, three, one. So there we have our, it's kind of an inversion, but it's still a triad. There's the, the three, one, five version open. And here's the one, five, three version. Those, so that's six different ways to play uh, a major triad. So I'm just gonna go through them really quickly. You've got your plain vanilla triad somebody says play me a G major triad that's usually what they mean if they want you to play the first inversion you would play second inversion but they're all G major okay and then there's the open variants one five three or the ten some would say and then there's the three, one, five, which is still a G major chord. And then there's the open chord where we use the five as the, uh, the lowest bass note, which would be. So here we're playing like the 10th, so the D, That's your B, that's your G on the top there. And then of course, and um, so how would you use these? So here's a good example of one I use a lot. And that is that, uh, that 
that open one where we use the third to the one to the five. And, uh, you know, instead of, uh, if I had to play a G major uh, bass idea, you know, I may use those three sort of skeletal anchor points and and play off of those. So I might, for example, um, you know, play a line that might go. That's a lot of chromatic stuff in there, but I'm basically anchoring it to those those uh, those powerful triadic uh, chord tones. Um, and that might be a bit much. I might I might more realistically I might do something more like. Uh, But you get the idea that I'm, I'm basically using that shape as a means to move in and out of those chord tones, you know, with, uh, and I, and I can do a whole number of things like, uh, um, I might take a motif and say, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. I might, uh, I might, uh, walk up to that third and walk up to the fifth. So I might get a line like this. Um. I'm still using this. I'm just starting to add color now. That's all still G major. Uh, that I just I just repeated as a, an ascending descending motif, a, you know moving towards those key tones there so i think there's like endless possibilities but if you don't know those shapes and you're always approaching your uh chords from a uh you know it's always like top down from the root being the one um you know you're always you know think about think about inverting things think about opening things up and um and like I was saying, you know, think of your triads like a, sort of like a skeleton that you're fleshing out. And uh, that's how I use triads all the time. Uh, they're powerful sounding. They, uh, they're giant. And it's just a good spot to, um, it's a good minimal spot to start from, you know. Um, anyways, kick me's criticisms, corrections. Uh, I hope that helps. I would highly recommend learning your, learning those six variations on all the different uh, triad types. You know, your minor triad, your diminished triad, your augmented triad. Uh, anyways, enjoy.